I once had a guy tell me his best advice for living a life well was, don't kick your chickens. I live in New York City where a lot of people quote unquote kick their chickens. Across from my building they put up this net to prevent the pigeons from going into their windows, but instead the pigeons get caught in the nets and then they strangle. And then they die and it looks awful. But it's not really any different than just walking across the street to the bodega and ordering a turkey sandwich. At least in terms of how the bird is treated. I stumbled into a restaurant called Bear Burger in New York City's West Village and saw a menu advertising free-range grass-fed meats, organic and all-natural cheeses acquired from local artisans and sustainable farms. It seemed to be a place that did their best not to kick their chickens. So I ordered an ostrich burger. A free-range, humanely raised ostrich burger. It was delicious. It was ostrich. I wanted to find out why people were serving people ostrich and why this was a good idea. So, I drove to Wisconsin. My name is Yurvis Pelicanos, uh, one of the founders of Bear Burger. Uh, and the whole idea behind it was just like, bring a superior burger back to New York City. One that used organic, fresh, local ingredients. And build a whole restaurant around that idea. I uh, was thinking of the large eggs and thinking, well, maybe we could sell eggs to uh, bakeries instead of them cracking 20 eggs. An ostrich egg was much larger, and I thought that would be a great idea. Well, to my surprise, as I researched and investigated, I found that it was a meat. I'm a commercial farmer. I got it into this business looking for an avenue where I can make a, a few extra dollars versus commercial operations where everything is mass value. We went into the ostrich business and into the meat end of the business because we believed in the meat itself. We, at that time, in the late 80s and the beginning of the 90s, America was starting to think healthy and start thinking about low fat meats and low calorie meats. And ostrich fit the criteria. Roger is one of the few people I've met in the meat industry that really genuinely care about the animals that he's raising, the, uh, the meats that he's selling. And he is one of the few guys, like I said, who stands behind uh, certifications and everything he does. He believes in it. It's, for him, it's not just a, a business. It's a way of life. One of the things Bear Burger was smart to do was to gather a menu of proteins that are all healthy, but it's if it doesn't taste good and doesn't eat well, it doesn't make any difference how healthy it is. America won't eat it. So he put together a, a real good formula, and that's what um, is there at Bear Burger today. I just want to grow this stuff and have somebody on the road. So the person on the road is going to cost me more than it would cost me to, to grow this stuff. So marketing is everything when you talk about sustainable agriculture. Roger Gerber is basically the one who uh, markets the meat. Andy's pretty amazing because he can tell you to the penny what it costs to feed an animal. That's, he's a true farmer. No, there's all different um, ways to operate. This is my particular mode of operation here. Commodity prices are doubled. All feed costs are doubled. Fuel costs are high propane. It's not profitable to be uh, growing uh, most exotic animals at this stage just because of commodity prices in the markets. And so uh, I'm, I'll lose money on these birds. Uh, there's no way anybody could pay enough to cover where commodity prices are these days. If you grow commercial beef, which my nephew is doing here, 
he can work on the market every day and price accordingly. When you're in your exotic meats and so on, you're strictly limited to uh, your fixed markets. There's very few birds left in this country. The problem with it is it's, it's a hard animal to raise, it's an expensive animal to raise, and it's just the availability of it, you know, and the people want it, it's just hard to come by. There's a thousand and one ways an ostrich knows how to do itself in. They're sword swallowers. They just love to get that down their throat, and they work all day long. You can have a bird, you know, that's 18 inches tall, he'll try to swallow that stick. That was one fundamental rule I learned in my college days. One professor put me to the task. You gotta know the psychology, how a bird eats. You gotta know every little aspect of an animal if you wanna raise it, so caution. By the way, the ostrich has the strongest immune system of any species on Earth. It's the oldest species on Earth. It's the, it can run at I think 45 miles an hour for an hour or more. It also has a brain about the size of a quarter. They tell me there's only, my brother tells me there's only one thing dumber than an ostrich, is the guy who grows them. <laughs> In my right mind, so to speak, from a commercial standpoint, I would have never got into this business. This bird is not designed for commercial operations. Turkeys, chickens, you know, you can grow in confinement masses. An ostrich is a free running bird. You cannot grow any sizable numbers in a confinement situation. At the end of the day, I mean, what would you rather eat? The animal that is raised the way nature intended it to be raised, or the animal that's raised in, like they say, that industrial fashion? It, it really all comes down to cost. I don't want to mention any other place in particular. You're talking about cookie cutter, mass produced burgers that, you know, they just throw out there. Like for us, everything is prepared uh, fresh. That's the way we farmed when I was a kid. But nobody likes to sweat the hard work mm -hmm. day in, day out. Commercial farms, a whole different story. I can have 300 acres of corn, sweet corn planted one yeah. day. And here I'd be screwing around every day for two hours a day. 365 days a year, mm -hmm. and I'm going to make peanuts the disc compared to the, yeah. to the sweet corn. I'll make $1,000 an acre maybe this year on sweet corn. Mm -hmm. I'm lucky if I get $300 for a bird. This is probably the lowest point in the ostrich industry. There's it's a very, very sad thing because we spent uh, close to 20 years developing a market only to see it almost disappear. So if you develop a taste for lean meat or you know that's your lifestyle, great. You can go down the road. I got a brother who grows beef. He wants that just like butter. You know, if you're a person inclined to have fatty, juicy meat, this will not be what you want. Mm -hmm. But just you can cook maybe 500 pounds of this meat and you probably are lucky with having a symbol full of fat. It's, there's no fat in this meat. It's an amazing, amazing red meat. Red meat, I mean, first of all, people, a lot of people don't realize that it's a red meat. They think it's like, it's a, it's a turkey or chicken. I mean, it's, it tastes very similar to beef. And then when I find out that it's, it has, it's lower in fat than like most of your chickens and turkeys and has more protein than beef, just made all the sense in the world to offer it. It had the protein qualities of a red meat, but it had all of the health benefits of almost fish, uh, being, you know, very, very low in fat, calories, and cholesterol. Organic means no hormones, no antibiotics. It means the land that these animals are on, the food that they consume, has never had, or for a minimum of three years, chemical, synthetic chemicals sprayed on that land. There are no antibiotics or hormones ever. See, an ostrich doesn't need a hormone. It grows 12 inches a month, and we process it at 10, 10 months, so there, it, it's foolishness. To, to give it hormones to try to make it grow faster. They, as a matter of fact, it grows so quick that if you did that, it would, it, the bones would grow right through the skin. Antibiotics, it has the strongest immune system on earth. Why would you give it antibiotics? People with, that have, have discovered so much of the sicknesses they have and the cancers from the chemicals that are sprayed on the crops that go into the animal, that go into our cells. So the bottom line is, we're, is particularly in my generation, we'd like to live a little longer and we finally come to the realization that, that we are what we eat. I was diagnosed with a terminal illness and uh, I wanted some project to do and I worked with animals all my life. And my dad was dealing with 
some llamas, and the guy had ostrich chicks, and and so this has been my project for 15 years, something to keep me occupied. I'm looking at dialysis, you know, and transplant and all that monkey business, and and uh, the prognosis, you know, two to five years, and I'm still here. Wow. I'm one of a kind, they tell me. And yeah, the reasons that you eat ostriches, of course. Uh, uh, flavor, that's very uh, vitally important, but the health reasons are your primary reason. Uh, taste to me is number one. It, uh, I mean, uh, Tori, obviously, being in the restaurant business where people want to come and eat and they want to eat, I think that's what separates us from a lot of the other organic restaurants. And we put taste on the top of our choir. We want to offer the taste, we want to offer our guests the tastiest burger that they can have. And it just so happens that the tastiest burger you can have is also an organic burger. <laughs> So basically, you're, you're looking at the healthiest protein that you could possibly consume. What's well, a real beautiful sight to see is when they start running 40, 50 mile an hour around that field. Full bore, coming down over the knolls. It's almost as if the ostrich is supposed to be a secret. As if God said, all right, I'm gonna make this bird so ugly and so difficult to raise that no one would ever think to eat it. Luckily, that secret's leaked out, and guys like Roger, Andy, and Euripides have done their best to share it. And the fact that ostrich is so hard to raise adds to its charm. Not only is it healthy and delicious, but it forces those raising it to turn back the clock to a farming ethics that fits chronologically with Norman Rockwell and black and white television, to a time when people said things like, don't kick your chickens. So go find some ostrich meat and eat it and feel good about yourself. Would you rather eat ostrich or hamburger? Yeah. Ostrich. Macaroni and cheese or ostrich? Ostrich. 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 Hot dogs or ostrich? Ostrich. Yeah, I agree. I love ostrich. Regular hammer. It's not a bird at all. It's the only thing I've always